It's 9 a.m. in the west wing of the White House. Presidential spokesman Larry Speaks is meeting with his staff. In a few minutes, he'll be briefing reporters. Number of Libyan questions out, nothing, nothing uh, that we're going to comment extensively on. A few dozen yards away, the White House press corps begins to assemble for its twice daily sparring match with Speaks. Well, it's the adversarial relationship. Larry Speaks is on one side of the fence and I'm on the other side. We both know what we're trying to do. What he's trying to do is make certain that the president's policies, plans, programs, intentions are put forward in not only the best possible light, but if possible, a perfect light. On the other hand, I'm trying to find out what's really going on here. Ronald Reagan also calls the relationship between the press and the presidency adversarial. I asked the president if he finds that frustrating. To a certain extent, yes. It uh, sometimes seems less of a hunt for news than uh, to see if they can't catch you. Speaks and his staff discuss topics which might come up during the day. On this day, the president will be meeting with two governors from oil-producing states. Television cameras will not be allowed into the Oval Office. Uh, we're not trying to promote it that much. Aides tell Speaks he can expect to be asked why the president will be seeing two Republican governors and not Texas Governor Mark White, a Democrat. If you get specifically a question, why not uh, Governor White? The answer would be very honestly, we thought he would misuse the forum given his past behavior on this subject. But the main concern on Speaks' mind is an item in the morning's paper. A Treasury Department official has told a congressional hearing that the administration is willing to consider an excise tax as a compromise on tax reform. So far, Speaks' staff is not able to supply him with a transcript of the official's remarks. Uh, Frank, thank you guys. All face. Uh, okay, well, we'll chase it down. The press briefing is delayed as Speaks tries to find out what the official meant in his testimony. I think the most frustrating aspect of this job is attempting to get all of the information that you need. Uh, we approach this job day in and day out just like a reporter on the beat. We go for the facts just like a reporter would. Okay, here we go. I'm never nervous for a minute in the briefing room as long as I have the facts. But when I'm afraid there's something I don't know and some, uh, some um, hole I might step in out there in treading my way through that minefield of the press questions, uh, then I'm a little bit nervous. Speaks is now ready for a question on that possible presidential compromise, but the question is not asked. One of the first questions is about the president's meeting with the governors. Mark White among the... He is not. White just isn't. That's not good enough for reporter Sarah McClendon. After the briefing, she pursues Speaks to his office. But Speaks is already in a closed-door meeting. McClendon has to settle for well, Speaks' assistant, Pete Roussel. Why don't y'all do like Lyndon Johnson used to do? Bring everybody concerned with one subject to one meeting, and then nobody can pass the bucket and say, it's that damn man down in Texas who's not here. Well, the answer is, sir, uh, Governor and I requested this meeting. So did he's yeah, but he's the Governor conference. and I... This confrontation ends on a friendly note, but not all of them do. A number of reporters are upset with Larry Speaks for what they call the arrogant and condescending way he ducks answering questions. Last month, Speaks had a particularly nasty exchange with some reporters in a briefing the day after the U.S. bombed Libya. Reporters wanted to know exactly when the president ordered the attack. Speaks explained that there was no one instant saying the decision evolved. Reporters persisted, and the briefing, which had been closed to cameras, grew tense. Speaks. I don't know why there's a preoccupation. Reporter, history, we're writing history. Speaks, what the failure is, Bob, is your ignorance of the decision-making process. Speaks calls some of the questions foolish. A reporter asks Speaks to explain what appears to be a conflict between the timing of the president's action and statements by other officials. Speaks, now you get to the root of it. You want to get me and say, aha, we got you. Reporter, check on the veracity of public officials. Well, how dare us? Speaks, you finally come around to your hidden motive. Reporter, I think maybe you should take a lesson in civility and how to duck an answer without insulting people. I have to conclude that you must be hiding something because no other person would be so paranoid in the way you are refusing to answer questions. I'm sorry to interrupt. Owen Ullman well, of the Knight Ritter fact. newspaper chain was one of the reporters in that verbal scrap. Uh, if you can put the reporter on the defensive, then perhaps uh, you distract everyone from the issue the reporter is pursuing. So it actually answered the question six times in virtually the same language, adding detail every time uh, when the question came up again. 
Although I've heard you myself say, well, I would have expected that question coming from you, Leo, mm -hmm. or whoever. Yeah. Isn't that kind of a put down? Well, it's kind of a put down, but maybe the question deserves a put down. Speaks was flung into the job he now holds when press secretary Jim Brady was shot in the head during the assassination attempt on the president in 1981. At that time, Speaks was not a Reagan intimate. Only in the last year or so has Speaks been allowed to get closer to presidential decision making. That's the goal you shoot for, is somebody, when he speaks for the president, uh, you know that it's literally the president speaking. This job is, is sort of like learning to type. You're using the hunt and peck system for a while, and then all of a sudden you feel like you're using the touch system. To reporters, the White House is out to stage manage the news. To the White House press office, reporters are out to get the president. Both sides are right, and both sides believe what they're doing is in the public's best interest, and it's not likely either side is about to change its tactics. John Dudakis, CBN News, the White House.